in flight you may wish to calculate what your track made good is, which is called the actual track of the aircraft, and your ground speed. You can do this calculation providing you have maintained a constant speed and heading from the last positive fix. The calculation requires three inputs, true airspeed or TAS, heading and actual wind. For our example, we're going to look at an aircraft with a TAS of 200 knots, a heading of 120 degrees magnetic, and an actual wind of 170 degrees magnetic at 50 knots. Our first step is to set the TAS, or true airspeed, of the aircraft. Our TAS is 200 knots, so what we need to do is to bring that 200 knots around here above the two I beg your pardon, the TAS triangle. The second step is to plot our wind vector on the wind disk, which is this coloured disk. To make it easy, what I suggest you do is to bring the wind direction of 170 degrees magnetic and bring it up above the TC mark. Once it's there, you can simply mark the 50 knot position using that scale which I have identified. So we'll plot the 50 knots with a clear X marking the position of the 50 knots on that 170 degree line. The third step is to rotate the wheel again, this same wheel, around so that our heading is now above the TC. So we want to bring the 120 degree position above the TC mark. You'll notice that the wind dot has moved around to the right hand side. We now read down from where that X is onto our scale, our crosswind scale, and read the crosswind component. In this case, we have a crosswind of 38 from the right hand side. We now need to read the crosswind component and convert it from a speed into an angle. So we've got to find 38 knots position and equate it to an angle. We now read the drift angle from the number underneath that, which is 11 degrees, using the middle scale. Now we've calculated that we had 11 degrees of drift, we now have to shift this because this is not the actual direction the aircraft has travelled. And so we need to bring it around, matching the 11 degrees of drift. We had a right crosswind of 11 degrees. So we need to rotate the wheel around to the right. If it's a left crosswind, we would rotate this wheel towards the left. So we're going to rotate it to the right by 11 degrees, which equates to the drift that we've established. You notice that that wind has now moved further around to the right. So we need to do a recalculation now. And so we need to now read our crosswind component again, which is now shifted from 38 up to the 44 knots. So once again, like we did before, we need to come to the outside and find the drift which matches this new 44 knot crosswind from the right. So we now have 13 degrees drift, which is two degrees more than we had before. So once again, we need to make a correction. And we may need to readjust this a number of times. In this case, we'll rotate a further two degrees around to equal the 13 degrees of drift. Once again, this little X has shifted a tiny bit. So we're going to check it again. And we now have nearly 45 knots of crosswind, which equates to 13, which is the same as what we had before. So effectively, we don't need to make any further modifications. We can now read off our track made good above the TC mark, which is 107 degrees magnetic.
That's our actual track across the ground. To calculate our ground speed, we need to add our head or tailwind component to what's called the effective TAS. Our effective TAS is not 200 knots because we're holding off 13 degrees of drift. Now the 13 degrees of drift effectively means we're not traveling at quite the 200 knot speed. So what we'll do is we'll read the speed above the 13 degrees on this black effective TAS band. And so we'll read that figure above the 13 degrees, which gives us 195 knots effective TAS. We now read our head or tailwind component. In this case, we're going to read horizontally across from the X and we have a wind component of minus 23. A headwind is a minus component, a tailwind is a positive component. So we have minus 23 knots as our wind component. Final step in the process is to add our effective TAS to our wind component. So that means we add 195 knots effective TAS to the minus 23 knots of wind component which gives us a result of 172 knots. So there's our two answers. Our track made good, 107 degrees magnetic. Our effective ground speed over the ground was 172 knots. Here are a set of exercises for you to try. What I suggest you do is to pause in between each exercise. So in a second, I'll get you to pause while you do exercise number one and then resume the play button to see your answer. Now repeat that same process, pausing between each exercise to check your answers for each of the subsequent exercises. Hopefully you've now mastered the exercise of calculating track made good and ground speed. Good luck.